Guys, today is a very special day. I am joined by TJF Blue uh, from the Jokers clan on the North American server. Now, I've known TJ for a very long time. Uh, he's been involved heavily in the Blitz tournament scene for NA, uh, and I've met him personally at offlines. And it's a whole different kettle of fish uh, to be in the tournament scene for that long and the way the game is played. So what we're going to do is talk all about the recent Blitz Ultimate Cup, Jokers, some of the strategy, uh, how tournaments work, the teams, the calls, everything inside that. I'm going to showcase some of the footage, TJ's footage from the Blitz Ultimate Cup. I'm also going to talk about uh, wargaming, past tournaments, some of the players that go into the folklore of the Blitz tournament scene. I hope you enjoy it. It's an hour long if you're looking to just gently waft off to sleep this could be the ticket you've been trying to find um it's been a real pleasure talking to tj as well and it's something i uh, i look forward to doing more in the future with this kind of stuff anyway leave a like subscribe share it with your friends off we go there we go that wouldn't be good all right here we go well hello there humans of these earthlings whoever you are wherever you are whatever you're doing and whoever you're lucky enough indeed to be doing it to welcome back to channel i'm bushka and today's a very special day you're all very very lucky we're going to be getting a, an insight into the competitive side of blitz with my good amigo tjf blur um i was just looking at the discord chat here tj the first time i talked to you uh was 2018 on discord um, oh, but, you know, wow. we've obviously done a lot of other stuff. And that was all the way back uh, when you were playing with Pinsa. Um, and, like, a long time ago, and I, we actually last talked at the Blitz Ultimate Cup, which I hosted from Lithuania. And TJ was a member of the winning North American clan, Jokers. How did that feel? Pretty good way to uh, tap out 2022? Indeed. It was... Uh, I thought it was a, a sort of a... <laughs> how to say going back to my roots a bit you know playing an online tournament you know with you commentating it uh you know the only difference was you were doing it from the wargaming studio in lithuania not from your your home setup yeah. back back where you live uh but uh, it was it was a great feeling and uh, now, now you've made me feel old that, that you know i've been doing this for four plus years of blitz competitive it's definitely been a long time it, it has uh, no. been, mate. It's I mean a lot of tournaments too. You got you've you've jammed in a lot of tournament work, haven't you? Yeah, it's it's been definitely a journey. Um, because you let's see, you commentated going back into that Discord chat, like you said, uh, twenty eighteen, it would have been twenty eighteen spring tournament, which was I believe <laughs> the war gaming sort of uh. inaugural rollout, right? Of their you know, they're sort of yeah, new they're server tournaments. Yeah, we're right, instead of just right. doing the one Blitz Twister Cup thing, where they uh, they started doing a more regular tournament schedule, which was actually a huge positive for the game at the time. It seemed in its infancy like it wasn't going to be that big a deal. It was great to have, but it really right. they've got multiple levels with their t like. I got to be honest, TJ Blitz do it just about better than anyone in terms of. You can go and play tournaments and be competitive at all kinds of different levels on your own server, not just on a world stage. And I think that's Absolutely. pretty cool. They've definitely, I think you hit the nail on the head. They've, they've opened it up so that it's not, it's not just the top 1%, you know, exactly. best of the best exactly. boys club anymore. It's that, no. you know, they have, even with this Blitz Ultimate Cup, there was, you know, the, the grand finals, which you commentated, which, you know, obviously that was the, the best of the best, but there were a couple other levels. There was, I believe, a middle echelon, they call it, and then a lower echelon. So you've got, yeah. you know, 30 something teams all in play here, all at varying different skill levels, all at different, you know, levels of experience playing tournaments and i think it's a it's a wonderful way for players who are interested but don't really know how to get in they can sort of dip their toes in and sort of get an experience and see whether they like it you know whether they want to pursue it further yeah because it is it is a, a specific thing like once like for instance i think a lot of people don't realize but how much of your time in blitz is spent in just tournament kind of tanking mode where you're checking things out practicing doing that kind of stuff oh i mean it's a 
there's so much behind the scenes. You know, what, what people see on the live streams is obviously, you know, the gameplay live, but there are hours and hours and hours that go into, yeah. you know, training for it and, you know, learning the spots on the map. And then, you know, for, for this, for 2022, the, the Blitz Ultimate Cup, I was very happy to just be uh, a team player. This was really one of the first tournaments since I started all the way back in 2018 where I had just been able to be a team player. You know, I've done for years a lot of the calling and a lot of the strat making and been involved at a much more, you know, higher level and, you know, the more involved you get, the more time it takes. You know, you're spending yeah. time on, on strat sketches and you're, you know, thinking up positions in training rooms with just you and a couple other people. And yeah, it can, it can become pretty time consuming. Um, well, you're getting educated right now, aren't you? I mean, you're, you're <laughs> full on in terms of life. Yeah, yeah. I think, gosh, the, the last time, if I, if I, my memory serves me correct. I think the last time I was on your channel was being interviewed after the 2018 spring. And I would have been I, in high school. I would have been a senior in high school then. And now I'm a, I'm a junior in college. So talk <laughs> about passage of time. <laughs> Good God, my friend. Different human altogether. Still a lovely bloke, but yeah, that's that's uh, crackers. I'd, I'd like to delve if you if you let me just for a second into the real nitty gritty of this because I think the the stuff that people don't really see in this is the way it all comes together. And you mentioned that now you're uh, more part of a team, and Joker's definitely did seem to play very much a team game. Mm. Uh, it was mm. it was a really strong showing. Like you guys have out of all the um, the teams probably were the ones that were the most heavily favored like you you'd won a lot of tournaments prior to this so sure. when you go into it how do you build towards it's like say for instance canal how do you build a strat on canal well okay speaking back to the the, the canal strats that I've worked on and, and I'll say straight off the bat you know for, for this tournament I was not involved in any of the strat making at all I was you know I showed up when I was told to show up you know that they, they had the strats pre-made but when you're making a strat for canal right you you have a website link that's open there's a I think the the one that everyone uses now is strat sketch uh, it has a picture of the the canal map the mini map I mean blown up to a big scale and you, you, your approach would be to determine first off what side of the map are you going to play for? Because, you know, on, on Blitz maps in, in tournaments, you have to kind of determine what area you're going to play for and what area you're going to try and deny them. And, you know, Canal's a really interesting one because I think it's probably the biggest map in the game. Uh, yeah, correct me if it's I'm one of the most wrong on that. everyone loves that map too. Like, they really Indeed. love that map. It's one of the most favorite maps in the game for just that reason. Yeah, well, it's it's so unique, right? Because it's it they they managed to get a map that is just so open across so many different areas, and you don't get bogged down in like a town brawl or anything like that. It really is just it, it flows very well, uh, despite its size. But yeah, to go back to what you're saying about making a strat. You would you the caps are such a big problem on canal because the thing with canal is if you get two caps, it's very very hard to break somebody's cap advantage hold. And you saw in our game we yeah. lost that canal game. Uh, and I would say, you know, there were definitely things we could have done better, and maybe we could have won. But the reason why we were the ones who had to push and we were the ones who I think ultimately ended up losing. Well, it was because of the cap and that was because the yeah. uh, origin who we were playing against their strat was, was brilliant. It revolved around not only they picked up B cap, but they, they did a really aggressive push to deny a C cap. And so if you can pull that off successfully, if you can get a cap, deny somebody their cap that they're going for on canal and then be able to sort of pick up what we call like one of the free caps which is like a or d right because if somebody doesn't go d side you can get d for free if somebody doesn't go a side you can get a for free and what they were able to do is get this double cap and relegate us to having only one cap which puts us under a huge amount of pressure to do something because you know two caps to one you're going to lose the game in a matter of minutes at that point that the time is ticking uh and so the struggle on canal is how much 
focus do you put on caps? Do you try and go for kills? And, you know, different callers take very different approaches to it. Uh, and I should point <laughs> out here, while you're talking about this, guys, if you haven't watched the game, you should, because it's one of the best games that came out of the three different castings I did for this tournament. And TJ's saying they lost that game, but it was so crazy close. Like, at the end, <laughs> it was three on two as the clock ticked to a 1,000. And like two seconds after the clock ticked to a thousand, you cleared a T100 LT from the red That's team right. that would have completely flipped the game. Like two seconds. Yeah. And their last tank was like a one shot. So uh, he was it on was 19 HP or something like that. Yeah. yeah, 15, 15. Don't be generous. So it's <laughs> like those strats, they're razor's edge, aren't they? Indeed. And, uh, you know, that was sort of the, if you want to talk, a little bit about style what was really interesting sort of for me i guess as a little bit of an outsider coming into the at the start of blitz ultimate cup was uh, i was actually if, uh, 2021 blitz cup if we go back a year uh was back when you know i was actually leading uh, our our rain team which we'd had for a number of years and and ended up being a disappointing season we finished third and i said okay you know, I think I think my time is up. You know, I think you know yeah. better better players have have come on to the stage, and you know, I'm not I'm not as as uh, I'm not as keyed into some of some of the new the new thought processes and strategies that are going on. So I bowed out, uh, and for a year I haven't played since then, uh, and so I went a full year without playing any comp. Wow! And then coming <laughs> coming in uh, to the start of this, it was at the end of October. And, uh, you know, a couple different factors played into it. But ultimately, it was, you know, I picked up an injury in uh, in the, the, the soccer uh, team that I was playing. So I was like, all right, well, you know, I, I'm a competitive guy. I want to play. So I reached out to the captain of Joker. And uh, long story short, made it onto the team with just a couple days left before the season started. And I realized very quickly, though, that the, the, the top two teams were going to be Joker and it was going to be Origin. And yeah. Origins style is a very cap reliant, very much they will wait for you type of style, right? They 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 have some aggressive strats, but generally speaking, they like to make you make the move first, right? Yeah. Uh, and Joker's the dead opposite. The the you know assassin who you you talked to a little bit when you got to interview him after we won, he's you know a younger guy. Very he has great aggressive strats, and he <laughs> he does not like to sit still. If we're sitting still for thirty seconds, he's asking. You know we could be up three hundred cap, and he's like, let's push. You know it's just it's that type <laughs> of thing. Um, and and so yeah, in in Canal you you got to sort of see those two. I feel like throughout the final, you got to see those styles going head to head of the, the aggressive team playing sort of going for the kills type strategy, which was Joker versus trying to get that cat pressure, trying to bait you into a misplay and then punish you for it, which was which was origin. Going back to the whole different styles of uh, the gameplay, there is definitely different styles of gameplay, but the tank selections on NA were often mirrors, just exact mirrors of each other. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you feel about where the actual vehicles are? In I mean, you're always going to have better and worse, but right. it seems like it's Krenvagens and Type 71s or Busts. Like, it seems really, really solid with those two tanks. How do you feel about particularly the Type 71 and its place in the game at the moment? Ooh, well, uh, are Wargaming going to see this? In no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's, it's, it, was, it was definitely interesting because when I had, you know, when I had quit in 2021, the, the tank wasn't in the game. And so coming back into it, you know, you've you've been playing the game. You've come up against Type Seventy Ones. You know that those things are they're they're like a mirage when you're trying to pen them. They're they're gray yeah. one second and red yeah. the next. And yeah. it, it is it is probably the most difficult tank in all of the years that I've played comp to pen 100%. consistently. Would you would yeah. you agree with that? Yeah, it's yeah. it's got the it's what you call the thresholds are closest to pen no pen that I've ever seen. Um, yep. So it, it's it's like. It's not like there is a clear weak spot where you are always going to pen this spot. If the angle changes exactly. 10 or 15 degrees and a little wiggle, then it's just yep. 
Yeah. Oh, it's so frustrating. And I can't imagine as a comp player, like coming up against that, when you're not exactly in DPM powerhouses, like you drive primarily a crane bargain. And right. um, like, how are you doing? Like against, <laughs> like, what are you? Well, like, Oh, I'll, you know, I'll be honest with you. I think I had it. I, I preferred to play the Kronwagen because at least with the Kronwagen, you can take calibrated shells and all of a sudden your heat rounds are 374. And I feel yeah. like when you get to that 370 plus range, the, the type's armor becomes a lot less scary. It, you, you load yeah. those heat rounds in and you, you've got more to work with, I guess I would say. Yeah. Um, yeah, 100%. When, you're, when you're in a type though, type versus type, the type I think has three... 30 heat pen base so yeah. if you put calibrated on it goes to like 360 something that 10 millimeters 10 15 millimeters of penetration difference makes a huge huge difference when you're yeah. when you're fighting and so you know frankly yeah i got you know players get put in different tanks based on you know how reliably they can pen and you know the trick with the cron is okay you get the better pen but because your dpm is so bad your cron players need to pen those shots um yeah and I, yeah, I was happy to do it <laughs> you did really well like um, I, i've watched the footage but like you were doing 3k games and one you did nearly 4k um so you were definitely outputting good damage all the way through the tournament despite the fact that the tank is not exactly a dpm powerhouse right well well you know i guess i think yeah the, the key i guess just really comes down to to, to aim and you know i i picked it up pretty quick during the season that you know players when they play the type and you're you're trying to pen them they'll wiggle but the disadvantage with the wiggle is that they'll usually you know on that joystick because they're playing on mobile they'll go left right left right and so if you just set up and sort of you see on their wiggle they're going to go back left as soon as they turn towards you uh and you can just sort of figure out which way they're you know th that rotation that they're making with their their hull traverse you it can become it's all about you know stacking up the factors that make it more likely to pen and I, i'd say yeah. you know best practices uh, I, on I, the crown bargain with tjf <laughs> <laughs> I'm just glad that you that you're gonna be looking at the the grand finals footage and not not some of the footage from from my other games because it wasn't it wasn't all smooth sailing. I'll I'll, I'll come clean on that. Um, but let but me no, ask you this: You're a great player, right? Like, in terms of public games, there's a big difference, isn't there? Like, how everyone that's in these tournaments can play really well and win a lot of pubs, um, but there there seems to be more of a focus in your team just on pure uh teamwork than there was in the earlier parts of blitz tournaments like where quite often you'd see particularly north american teams where they would take just the best win rate guys mm. and shove them all in a clan and then it would mm. explode immediately afterwards like it would just fall apart um <laughs> north america was like the most volatile scene mike eight on sep like all the oh, early yes. days, it was crazy knives out kind of stuff. It was always <laughs> turning over and roiling. Um, how much more of it nowadays is like the like like a real sports team where it's like get your job done, just get your job done, mm. and be involved. Well, I think it's a, it's a definitely it's it's a great point. I think you know to say this. To, to choose my words carefully here, everyone on my Joker team is a fantastic competitive player right yeah. but there's no denying that if you were to go you know load up their career stats if you were to go yeah. load up their 30 60 90 day stats th there are a couple players on there who are you know very high up on the charts uh kami uh in particular but you know the core of that team uh it, they they are not spectacular public game yeah. players i'll be i'll be honest and, and they they know it as well you know they don't I, I it's 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 interesting because you know a lot of them are much newer so you know their their accounts are newer they sort of had a steeper uh, curve to going from you know 50 percenters to, to play competitive to lots of right yeah. and they didn't have you know it wasn't the days in, in 2018 where you know everybody on, on in competitive was 70 percent plus and you know running around with with the best stats on the server but purple i purple. think yeah, purple was a clan purple. <laughs> That's right. It's, they, they if you're not purple, you can't join. That's right. That's <laughs> right. Uh, but yeah, I think I think how, as as comp has evolved to, to kind of what we were talking about earlier about how wargaming has made it much more available for people to get into it in the first place. 
you, there really is it's two it's two separate skill sets uh yeah, and, and, and and very like distinct separate skill sets because you know not to name names or anything but you know having been around comp for as long as i have i've played with a lot of players who are the best of the best stats wise right they are farming 4000 damage you know they literally have 4000 damage tanks they've got 80% win rates they're crazy but when you play comp you have to have an element of selflessness and it sounds cliche but it is like it's so true if you don't know when to put your tank's hp just into the mixer and, and just be ready to just brawl right you're you're not going to you're not going to kind of cut the mustard and Th that's where this Joker team, you know, with this, this was the first season I'd play with them. It's, I, I just, I enjoyed playing with them so much because they all had that, that comp skill set nailed to, to like an absolute T. And they yeah. just, they had the, the knowledge in comp. And, and it's funny, and, 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 that, and that can be a disservice to you when you go play a public battle because all of a sudden, you know, you go make an aggressive push and you're used to having <laughs> six competent Somewhere teammates. And no one is and, helping. And, 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 Exactly. Everybody's, you know, doing their. Everyone's you know, you got still on the hill people. on Castilla, just waiting exactly. for something to drive through their gun sights. <laughs> right, right. I, and, I mean, uh, you look at that Fort Despair map. That's the perfect example of that when you guys played on Fort Despair, and you were actually in the farm position, up on right. the uh, the ramparts, like overlooking. You had side shots into IS fours and all kinds of things, but you left that DPM farming position, and thundered right. through the cap to actually share hit points. Which is, right, and it know. was it was the game winning, you know, and that was such a crucial game, honestly, because yeah. you know we'd lost the, the opening game on Normandy, you know, as as you know, the, the, I'm sure the, the you'll see in the footage that was the the one the one game where I made a really bad misplay. That was that was taking that idea of putting my my tank into the fight, and that was that was. I shouldn't have done that because what ended up happening was I just died for free. You know, if you if you see that game back, they just they come they steaming just, down the hill and yeah. they wipe me out. Uh, and they it pushed, ended up three v one, I think, on you. Yeah. Right. Right. And it was I was I, I pushed in because I was thinking that I could you know uh, help save my 60 TP down there, uh, Kakati, and you know thought we could we could last it out, but it was it was a bad decision. And and in comp, the, kind of the flip side is that sometimes you have to know. You just have to cut someone off. You have to know that they're gonna die. That's harsh. And That's harsh. It is. It <laughs> is. And but you know, but but frankly, uh, I, I, if if I look at the, um, there was one game in particular in that series. I believe it was the, uh, well, it, it was the Middleburg game really, where I I realized that people were gonna die on the hill. And and yeah, if if I if I went up the hill, I could have saved them. But I had to choose. I, I had to know. If I rotated up the hill, my guy in town was going to die. And if I rotated down the hill, there were going to be people up the hill that were going to die. And you have to make those decisions sometimes in comp that, you know, somebody's going to die and you have to prioritize the more important tank and sometimes prioritize yourself. Um, but yeah, on, on that Normandy game, it was it was a misplay. But on the, the Fort game, it was so huge to pick up that win because... No, I, I would say close. that the, really close. It, it was hugely close, and we ended up. I think what was it? it was the cap ticked over, right? We hit a thousand uh, yeah. because we had that B cap, and we were oh exactly. We were and you them. were all you were all in the B cap, stopping the B cap from getting any points. It was, um, I mean, it was really good from both sides, and and so many of these games from you guys in Origin came down to like a cap circle with people in. Oh yeah, like it was. Oh yeah, it was pretty wild. Yeah, and well, that it was, Middleburg game was close. Oh, it, the, the Middleburg game, the you know, the, they're they are a really good team, and I think you know when we lost, I mean, we were down one nil, we brought it back to one one, and then we were down two one again, and you know, in in those those situations, it can be hard when you go down, especially, you know, I would say honestly, the mood in the camp was, we respected Origin, but we definitely. We thought well, you we gotta should, believe in yourself. You, know, you gotta right, believe in yourself right. when you're doing this. And we'd beaten them, you know, we'd beaten them twice in the group stage. We'd beaten them in the upper bracket to even get to the grand final. They had to, as, as you know, you commentated, they had to go through the lower bracket to come back up and face us again. So we definitely had a confidence. And you know, this was, you know, going going down in a grand final scenario. It's it's easy to lose your head. Uh, 
and you know picking up that that fort game in particular was so huge because a, a one one is a very different scoreline than being two nil down right off the right off the bat um how do you and, feel yeah. about that format where I found watching it that the guys who, because it was quite strange that you'd play, if you were in the lower bracket, you'd play second versus third, and then you'd go, right. the winner of that would go and play number one. So you guys, you guys are a kind of cold, just waiting, whereas the other team is coming in and they've just won a hard fought game and they're absolutely primed. And it seemed in every one, the first couple of games were the best performances from the lower bracket team. It's it's funny, you know. I I would. It's it's interesting that you have that perspective because, on a, the comp team perspective, it's actually the dead opposite. We've is it yeah. with with this 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 uh, double elimination format where <laughs> it's it's a fake double double elimination really because whoever gets to the final first right if they if you win your yeah. two games in a row you get that you you get that seed into the grand final once you get into the grand final it doesn't matter if you've never lost if you lose in the grand final you're still getting second yeah. you know the double it's elimination ceases second. to it exist doesn't help you. Uh, doesn't help exactly. you much. Uh, and what i've seen it's it, it's not all it's not a hard you know not a hundred percent rule but generally speaking the team who wins the upper bracket and gets that sort of buy right they have to play that one less game it's a huge like huge advantage because they have all that time that they can spend training for the not it's a best uh, of nine right so nine yeah. maps and they they it, it, they they aren't going to be cold at all because they're spending that time training and what they don't have to to do is they don't have to exert any effort it's it's like you think about it in pro sports right it's the difference of a team getting a full week's rest before their final game uh you know like a big cup final or whatever uh it's like yeah. you watch basketball right i think you're a, oh, are you a big yeah. basketball, big, fan? Big basketball okay. fan yeah so it's like you know there can be a big advantage to you know if a team just played you know sometimes you get these those those matchups where they play you know with like a they play two games in three days or something like that right and yeah. that can be a disadvantage because you get tired you know you have to exert all that effort to win game one and then you got to go into game two and do it all over again and there's a mental uh just toll that it takes especially on you know like the caller because you know they they were fighting for their lives in that that lower bracket scenario where they knew if they lose they're getting third if they win they got a shot to win it all so huge pressure and then you know origin they won it four two against ponda but then they had what like a 30 40 minute break and then and then it Not was even it yeah was, it felt like it was yeah. very short from my end like that was yeah, interesting you, you right. mentioned there you were training Talk me through that. So you guys, uh, you guys, while that's all going on, are you watching the games, Ponda versus Origin? Well, we were supposed, we were not supposed to. A couple people sort of watched it out of curiosity, uh, you know, side eye while we were while we were training. A couple people, you know, if they were sitting on the bench. But generally, we didn't watch because we said, look, we don't care. Whoever we the maps don't are going to be, be the same, yeah. right? You don't want to get your hopes up because you know, there's always, you know, we we were there's a, we knew from experiences that, you know, Origin had given us a little bit more of a hard time. So there's sort of that secret wish, oh, maybe Ponda could beat them and we'll have a quote unquote easy final. But no, you don't want any of that. You just want to keep your head clear. And we were training against, uh, you know, our uh, collection of, you know, other other people who were, you know, just practicing the maps against us. Uh, and yeah, we were just really focused on, on our own uh, gameplay and our own strats. I want to go back to that sports analogy you use because i think it fits in perfectly with exactly what you were talking about before the idea that uh, it's not just the best of the best like if it's basketball or soccer you can only have one striker or, or, or a double striker lineup you can't just have every really good goal scorer in the game playing in your team because you've got to have defense right. you've got to have a midfield you've got to have passing and you you've got to have that discipline and i think right. it's it's very much the case where if you just put in a whole bunch of guys that are really really good at doing damage they're gonna bleed a lot. Like there's, yep. they're not gonna hold points and they're not gonna, strategically speaking, that's that makes a lot of sense. But when it comes down to brass tacks, you still have one guy who's making the calls, right? Well, I, I think actually, okay, uh, I'll give you, I'll give you the short answer and the long answer. The short answer is yeah. yes. Ultimately, the team captain, he gets the final say, but, 
having said that, there are for, for a for a team to do well, like the the most successful teams that I've played on. You're setting your the, the team captain is setting himself up for failure if he's the only one who's ever giving any input. You want one or two other players, senior players on the team to be, you know, I, I sort of coined it like micro calling because, you know, as the team gets spread out across the maps, right, and you, you, yeah. you have to be focused on your own gameplay, you know, the team captain, it's like he can't just be, he's not, you know, in a, in a spectator view over the map just getting to f freely call. He has to play the game too. Um, yeah. You need other people to be giving you input. Um, and, I, you know, I would say that was, you know, probably damage aside. Yeah, yeah great. I, I, I played a good a good series in the grand final. But what I what I feel like I brought to the Joker team in, in joining them was, you know, I was able to call out little things that I was seeing. You know, it's, it's those little, yeah. you know, knowing and not having that experience with comp to say, okay, they're lined up like this. They're going to, they're very likely going to make this play. You know, and, and then being able to call out the focus fire when you're in that brawl with like a, a 3v3 or something like that. You know, it's yeah, you need other people chipping in. Absolutely. Did you watch much of the other uh, finals at all? I, w I watched the EU finals yeah. and I watched yeah. a couple of the uh, the APAC finals. I got to see the, the last two games of the, the Risk uh, the, those and those were like the best games, right? I think the last two games yeah. on the Asia final were crazy. They were um, insane. <laughs> the Asia final was, was weird in that like, Risk were the underdog, but at the same time, right. I mean, they obviously didn't see themselves as that. But I did like the Asia final. Asia is always just weird. Like it just uses different tanks. The metas are so far removed from every other part of the world. It's You're just right. very, very odd. I definitely, I, I would say for fun factor, you know, for it, this is the one thing that Asia has just delivered year after year after year is that their their finals, yeah, you, you hit it. Like you you cannot tell what they're, they'll, they'll line up with grills. They'll line up yeah, with, with tanks that you, you've never seen used and they will just do the, the most crazy strats and, and, and pull it off sometimes. It's, it, fun yeah. factor is, is a 10 out of 10 for sure. I'll never forget when we had our first, uh, the finals in New York, which is like 2000 and 16 2015 oh my and gosh it was 16 you're right yeah and uh the id team were the asia server and they were considered no chance and they ended up coming second because everyone else was kind of doing things like beautiful strats like the russian team i think it was c4 was holding angles right. and using all different tanks id just got seven is7s and <laughs> rammed them in the face of every other team in the comp and nearly won the thing. It was ridiculous. Right. And no one else had really considered that, but they just went, uh, we're like, we're Korean, here we come. <laughs> like, I, have you come across any of that in uh, tournaments in particular where a team has just like done something so stupid that it's worked on you? And you're just like, how did we lose that? Well, I mean, oof, to, to be honest, it probably, uh, I don't know if you, I think it was during the period where you had maybe stepped back a little bit. I was from taking Blitz. my was, sabbatical from Blitz. Yeah, you, were on your, you were on your Blitz sabbatical. You were on that, you know, you were, you were the Bushka Pub I was writing my novel. Uh, I was writing my novel. <laughs> are your memoirs coming out? Uh, sign me yeah, up. Yeah, that'll be out soon. Uh, yeah, righto. But it was it was the, it was the last actual offline. It was the Twister 2019 one. So you know before COVID or anything like that. It was um, it was fall of 2019. And have you had? Did you ever? Did you follow any of that? Did you watch any of the games? Uh, no for that? man. Like I I came back and it was weird. I'd not really seen anything, and okay. I was I was just kind of trusting that I'd be able to fall back into it. But I'll be honest, I was pretty freaking nervous turning up because it's like. I've not done the homework here. This is oh, so I recognize TJ. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah, I just turned up. I was like, it'll be all right. We'll figure it out. Um, nah, you smashed it. Talk, so talk me through it. Talk me through it. Talk well, through. yeah, I was just going to say, for so for 2019, uh, you know, that that was it was that offline. You, you've commentated offlines before, so you know that yep. the you know that the pressure there is it's unlike it's, anything. It's just crazy. Oh, it's, yeah, it's immense. Uh, and the the team that I was on, the the, the North America team, uh, we we actually made it to the grand finals of that tournament. 
Um, <laughs> the team we were up against was this, this, they were the Russian team. They'd actually qualified through like the wild card system. They hadn't won the Russia server. There was, um, Wargaming had set it up because they'd had, there were six teams that were going to be there. And so they needed, you know, there's only, uh, five servers being represented, yep. NA, EU, Asia, Russia, and, uh, the China server at the time, and so there was one more wild card, and it was uh, ended up being a playoff between EU and Russia, and the Russia team won. But they faced off against us in the finals, and they were running strats that they were running like six projettos, which it was it was a lot. It, it, it sounds oh, nuts. It was a much better gosh. tank at the time. Then Wargaming yeah. hit it with the nerf bat after after uh, we you know after after that 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 tournament but still even even then even in its you know much better state i definitely i, I just remember you know we we, we lost 4-2 and i remember walking away just being like how did we lose to that because how did, you know, that happen? How did they get yeah. away with it right you know it's like they were they were defying and and it's you know it's russia servers done this as well for a long time they you know they, they said for the longest time heavy tanks we're, we're allergic to them uh you know we're, we're gonna take seven mediums do or die uh yeah. and and yeah, and, and you know, they won and you know, fair play to them. They were a great team, but it was definitely an element of, there was, I think, I think there was a factor there, a little bit of a mental factor, uh, where if a team runs something that is so unexpected, you don't have any context for how to play against it, right? And, yeah. you know, I would say that's what contributed ultimately to us losing because, you well, know, history we were- is littered with that kind of stuff, right. especially like esports and sports and, just the unexpected um, getting an edge and then just not being able to get out of the hole. And it's like, that's how the underdog generally gets up and does it. Right, right. And yeah, we just, you know, we didn't have, we didn't have any context or experience for playing against those kind of uh, lineups or strategies. And, you know, ultimately, you know, I'd say we put in a good performance, but it was just, you know, we, we, we made errors in crucial moments that I think part of it was down to just kind of pardon my French having WTF moments of like what the hell yeah. are you supposed to do yeah. when you what? see six projettos on a on a on an enemy enemy line they were running like 30 B's in one of the games you know it was some really uh far out there stuff so that, that was I'd say the example that comes to mind like a long wind long winded answer to, to your question back to back to the American tournament scene um having an NA final and all that is great but I mean not really the American tournament scene um do you I, I was talking to Alexandra uh, during the broadcast and she was like, she's like, oh, I really miss the offline. I think mm. it would be, I think it was a, a, a bit disappointing this year that we, we had the had the online tournaments and they were fantastic. They went really well. Um, but not having a cross-server match up there, it's like a big unanswered question now, isn't it? Like, because right. we love to see who is the best, who who gets up. That's the joy of it. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, I would definitely, while I, you know, I, I hope I don't come back to these words in a, in a year and, and have to break them, you're but gonna, I, I do not. think that this is my, 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 I think this was, my, this was supposed to be my last dance. You know, this was my, my, my ride off into the sunset that I got to cap, cap it all off with a win. But for 2023, if they do do an offline, I, I would definitely be watching. Uh, from home for yeah. sure and it would be it would be fascinating because the one thing I will also say to Wargame to Wargaming's credit is that you know while every sort of tournament cycle has the the flavor of the month tank right you know the, as you said earlier this season it was at least for North America and you saw it on EU a lot as well there was yeah, a lot EU of types too. a yeah. lot of types right and you know th th who knows in, in three months they'll probably nerf it uh, or they'll put in another tier 10 tank that will, you know, own the meta or they'll buff an, a pre-existing, you know, it's like for, for a while, like in 2019, the, the 215B was really meta again. Yeah. Uh, it it yeah. all depends on, you know, the nerfs and the buffs that they give to the, to the roster of tier 10s. But I think what's so great about tournaments is that you can watch year, you know, you could watch this year and then you could go watch 2021 and you could go watch, uh, 2020. There have been different meta tanks in absolutely. each of the absolutely you know big you know fall season tournaments and i think that it would be fascinating to see what what everybody has cooked up for next year for sure yeah i, I agree I, I and i hope we do get an offline and i hope i get i'm lucky enough to be there and involved with it because they are 
there's something else to see everyone there and the pressure and I I remember seeing um, after the first Minsk uh, Twister Cup I think it was 2017 um, right how the pressure really got to a lot of people particularly on that NA team it was like the nerves are, are a real thing and, and we play an, an online game and it's a mm. mobile game and so a lot of the people who play are quite introverted and, and do have a certain degree of you know social anxiety uh, not I'm not <laughs> saying like everyone but there is definitely an element of people there right sure, who do sure. better who function better when they're not face to face with people and I remember um, noting that because for me I'm an older guy and a lot of the guys like you when you started you know you're a senior in high school like right. there's there's a big difference between where they are there and like 10 years on as you know you're a you're grown you've got a mortgage whatever it is like you're a completely different person and dealing For with sure. that is very difficult it creates really really crazy situations where you know some people shine and other people just don't but it's it's a, it's the cauldron and i think that's why people right. want that offline experience Oh, absolutely. I mean, it was, you know, and you were there in, in 2017. And then again, you came to Minsk with uh, with Mr. Skate in 2018. Yeah, it was great. Uh, and yeah, you know, you got to see, you know, it was, I think, you know, with, with the champions who ended up winning it, Raid, they were not the favorites, realistically. It was one of the oh, Russian no, teams no, were no, favorites the Russians, by a country mile. The Russians were absolutely red hot right? favorites. I mean, the, talking the to the guys at Wargaming, they were certain that the Russian team was yeah. going to win it. They... Oh, really absolutely. were certain. Again, and, and I think that's, that's that, that team thing. Like, Raid were definitely right? a team. They well, weren't that's what I was gonna a say. collection of they really high winner guys. No, and they were, you know, if you look at the maturity of them as well, you know, yeah. I think they were a little bit, you know, they were into their late teens or, or early 20s. And that yeah. couple years difference really, it really does, does play a huge role because you know I, I remember down at that hotel bar they were they were some of them were drinking pints until oh, 2 a.m the night of they the were final. loving it they were absolutely <laughs> loving it it was Bunch their of german big buffy german blokes just yeah. smashing lagers <laughs> the guy driving the 215 v183 the death star I remember it was like midnight That's and right. he was just knocking back schooners like they were going out of fashion couldn't care oh, less absolutely. it was brilliant I mean, one of them almost, I think, missed the missed the grand final or missed the, the tournament itself because he was like, we were supposed to have the rehearsal and he showed up three hours late, you know, looking like he had literally just rolled out of bed, which, as we found out later, he had. It was... Uh, yeah. Know, yeah. Couple, Made someone in Minsk a very happy lady for the evening. It was... Oh, it, no. was uh, it was... It um, was... It was a thing. And I mean, the, the year before that was Legion and Legion were right. the kids. They were such kids, you know, like they really were. And Thomas mm. was like holding that thing together by being like the dictator, and it's right. The, that's what the offlines bring. They really do bring that sense, and it, it's got to be good too for building relationships. And it, you've got to. I mean, there's when you're playing Blitz, you're playing it completely differently to me and the average Joe, where it's we're just going out there and playing tanks and trying to do damage. And you're, you've got to have an eye to detail the stuff on the map. Do you ever like just see something on the map while you're playing in a public game and go, what the hell is that guy doing? And then you realize that's a spot or that's something you can use. In yeah. Uh, no, absolutely. There have been there there have been definitely some you know forty percenters who've wandered off into strange parts of the map, and I've been like, well, it didn't quite work out for you, sir. But uh, you know, I'm, I'm gonna bookmark that for for later use. Uh, no, absolutely, absolutely. Um, it, you know, public public games are, and, and especially, you know, I was watching your stream, I, I guess it was yesterday uh, afternoon for me, and, you know, sort of just seeing how, I feel like the games are very fast now uh, yeah. compared yeah. to a few years ago. Everything is yeah. a two-minute yeah. game, right? Uh, yeah. and, and that's a different, you know, you have to, you know, I, I feel like I've, I've fallen off. I used to be a much better pub match player but now it's like i roll into pubs and i, I feel like you know a little bit like yeah i'm on a different planet because you know the the pace of comp is just totally different now to to what public matches are Pub, public I, I feel like public matches are, are harder for and that's not oh, a brag harder. in any way they're hard no they are harder <laughs> it's i yeah, think people are now more willing to make trades too which is something that they were always worried about in the past people didn't want to take damage at all they wanted to just sit there and have the right. damage handed to them and especially in yep. medium tanks now, mediums and lights, people will just go and make trades. They'll just 
go and shove their hip point pull down your throat. They'll yell at you. Really annoying. They, if they, if, oh, yeah. If they think it's you're, like, you're isolated, they'll... Yeah. 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 I've had to really no, adjust absolutely. because I, I'm coming back to this meta and like yesterday on the stream I was playing with Silver and Silver's a really good player too, but mm. he was he was doing so much better than me. I couldn't get to grips <laughs> with it. We went the bottom of... Um, we went the bottom of Winter Malinovka, and he is just so funny. He's like, oh, Bushka, you've made lots of friends. And there's seven red <laughs> tanks go the medium flank of Winter Malinovka. Like, yep. heavies, TDs, everything. And they're all pushing, and I'm like, what is this? What is this better? Oh, Asia server, I feel like uh, watching watching some of your your streams. I feel like NA pubs are crazy, but yeah, seeing seeing some of the the tactics that were getting pulled out on you, it was definitely a bit a bit it's, shocking. Even it's a thing, man. Like there's cultural, <laughs> like there's there's cultural generalities with the way people play the game. There's no doubt about it. I reckon anyway definitely. from watching for long enough. Yeah, I yeah. mean, how do you feel about? the comp scene going forward do you is there anything that you really think needs to be addressed with it anything that you think is a worry i mean you know if you look if you look at sort of the quote unquote more successful in terms of you know commercially successful uh Esport scenes, you know, if, if you look at, you know, something like the PUBG even, you know, we, we, you were involved in that scene. There was a big, and then there may still be, I, I sort of I've played that for, for a couple of years and then, but, you know, the PUBG mobile scene and, you know, yeah. Pod mobile. There's a, there's a ton of, you know, Clash, Clash of Clans. There's a ton of mobile games out there with, yeah, they've got bigger player bases and, you know, they're more popular around the world. But, you know, World of Tanks Blitz is still a very popular game. Uh, it is. And I guess sort of the the overarching question that i've had in the years that i've played comp and it's not been answered while i've been on the scene and you know maybe it'll be answered in the coming years maybe it won't is you know can they can wargaming themselves sort of take it to that worldwide stage where there is where they can attract a, a global audience do you know what i'm saying yeah where where there can be a, a bigger you know commercial pull where where you know if you look at the bigger esports games, there's been you know contracts and and, and it, it really is you know it follows much closer to an actual sports you know like a, like it is a real sport. And if you look at some of you know like League of Legends or something like that, you know these massive games yep. that have you know hundreds of millions of dollars thrown. I don't know if if Blitz could ever get there, but I do. I at least have have felt that it's it's a great game and it they is have perfect for esports. It is right. I, look, right. I can and, and tell you from that involvement in PUBG and that, that it's very different in Blitz where the best version of the game is tournament tanking. Like it is the agreed. best version of the game, the most exciting version of the game. Whereas right. in PUBG and, and such, it really isn't the case. The, the game, I think the worst version of the game is tournament games. It's like mm. so generally very, very passive with a lot of right. lying down on the ground and not doing anything <laughs> because it's a third right. person game where there's grass like it's so weird and then you play blitz and it's like seven minutes max at right. points there's always a story and a narrative and it's so much easier to cast and to talk about because there is always something happening on the map absolutely even when even when no one's dying and there's no trades happening there's rotations happening and the caps ticking sure. over and there's always a narrative there so I agree. I think Blitz could definitely take it, but it is. I mean, I've seen we've seen a lot of esports things fail as well. A lot of orgs just For go sure. absolutely tits up, and it's it's hard. I think it's very very hard to capture that marketplace without capturing the public as the game first. So I don't right. know. I don't know what the answer it's, is, it's, but you. No, it's a, it's a good point, but it's you know it's you you when you were saying earlier that you know you'd been you'd been out of the game for so long. I think you know you you definitely could have fooled me watching watching those those games back with the you know the the, the commentating that you were doing on it. And you know as as much as the credit that you deserve, obviously for that, I do think that it it also plays to your point of that you know in yeah. a certain sense the tournaments you know the 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 excitement is there as well. You just need the you know the 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 person with the the big voice and the the booming Aussie accent to just you know capture the, uh, <laughs> the excitement of it it's, you know it's uh, getting it to a market I mean and, and finding a deal for it somewhere that will 
will allow people to really get into that. I do think that wargaming is is so centralized, like they do everything themselves. And right. so you end up, it's very hard to sell that because they, they do it already. I mean, and right. it, it's just a, it's a tough marketplace. Like it is just really, really tough to get bigger in esports. For sure. Well, there's such an oversaturation, right? That, you know, they, exactly. there's so many games exactly. out there and you're competing for, for existing player bases. And I agree, maybe it'll never reach that stage, but I would definitely at least hope that for the for the near future, that, you know, with Wargaming now uh, set up, but what were their, their offices in, in Lithuania like, by the way? Because, you know, I've, I've been to I didn't to actually get into the, uh, into the offices in Lithu Lithuania. I, because oh, okay. I was at the hotel, was I was staying... I was staying at the Marriott and then I was in this giant studio that was just concrete and like 20 foot ceilings. It was like an old warehouse that had been converted <laughs> and a huge okay. green painted like wall kind of area, like corner, like massive. Oh, wow. And and it was freezing and there was like just a <laughs> bunch of techs. Okay. It was minus eight, like outside, <laughs> minus 10, whatever. Oh my gosh. And there's just a bunch of techs working their ass off, sound guys, and me sitting at a table, like just a fold-out trestle table. And then they right. did all the magic to make it look fancy on the screen. It's so okay. weird how they make the sausage. Like, it's not like it looked fancy on the screen. And backstage, I'll put some footage up of it in the video. Okay. Backstage, that. it was it was not the same at all. Interesting. Well, that, that reminds me, I guess, a little of, especially talking about the, the concrete warehouses and freezing your, your ass off. In, in 2018, when the Pramo team was doing the photo shoots, they dragged us off to look like an abandoned Soviet, uh, you know, airplane yeah, factory. Yeah, and yeah. then it was, you know, it was, I swear it was colder in there than it was outside. And they were like, all right, yeah. you know, you're going to stay, you're going to do different poses here for the next hour. Uh, and, oh, yeah, that was, that was very, a very cold day for sure. That was, uh, that's such a weird thing too, that they, and thank god they didn't do it this year and uh full credit to wargaming for this every other esports thing i've been involved with has made the teams do these stupid poses where they have to look tough and they do their like finger guns and arms crossed and you know oh, teardrops gosh. falling down my eyes and yeah. like and you know they didn't do it this year and i like actually told them while i was there that is such a good decision not to have the like in, they introduced the teams as tanks which was I like so that. much better it was cool yeah right it was epic. no i mean yeah. i agree H having been on the receiving end of having a, a wargaming producer in 2018 tell me uh maverick and his royal fatness that we are going to do a dab the three of us <laughs> uh, <laughs> i have to say that i think my enthusiasm for for this tournament would have been significantly cooled if if i if i had uh, been you know if i'd received a comparable uh request that yeah i was gonna have to get my camera out and and do some dabs or or, or dances into the camera i think i might have you know bowed out at, at that stage no, i i definitely agree um dave i think again in in, in a serious note they definitely have you know, as with the reputation that Wargaming have, which I think can be a little unfair that, you know, they're, they don't listen to feedback, you know, that they can be very sort of unchanging. They've changed a lot about the tournament. They've changed over. huge amounts of stuff in game too. I, I, right. I understand that people find it's people are frustrated because they're passionate about the game and they love the game and they think that they could fix the game. But I've, talk to a lot of people inside the industry not just with wargaming about this kind of balance stuff before and mm -hmm. they point out they're like well the biggest part of the player base in all these games is not the elite guys who watch the youtube channels and and right. figure out the best strats and everything the biggest part is the great unwashed and they just they don't care about that stuff like what yeah. they care about they want a new camo they want their tank to yeah. have marks of excellence they want they want to have streamers coming out the exhaust pipes this is the stuff that the 85 percent of the player base cares about and the people that rant and rave on forums they they are not like i think there's a big thing too on youtube like some of the youtubers that um i've watched in the past like i watched a lot of world of warship stuff and flammer was the guy there that i've watched and even okay. in world of tanks where you watch uh klaus kellerman and that and I can't take it for too long. Like the negativity just gets to me. Like I just can't <laughs> right. deal with it. It's uh, no, I, and I, I haven't played, I haven't played warships, but having played PC, I think, you know, while different, 
departments of wargaming may be more deserving, you know, their their worships department or their PC department may be more deserving of, of some of the, yeah. uh, you know, the the, the I think yeah. the the Blitz team and and you know you've probably interacted with with more of them and, and different people, but you know I've gotten to to meet a lot of the you know the forward facing and some of the you know the internal staff, you know the Alexandras, the you know you remember yeah. Ribble Stripe back in the oh, day, the, the what Alex, a freaking legend. Yeah, yeah. Man, what a guy, and 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 you know they. Like the, the the thing that is unanimous across everyone that I've met is that they really do care about the game, and it's like you yeah. know the the new 100%. the new girl who who's doing the tournaments now, uh, Tolian, who you you must have met. Oh, when she you was were there massively and, uh, into it. Like she was great. so excited that it was doing well, yeah. and like it, they're all passionate. And like when we're doing these tournaments, I should point out to those listening, we're not doing them at like nine to five. Like we're casting the European tournament like at ten thirty at night. The and the ones that are what time were you up for off. the NA finals again? It was uh, like three in the morning. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Three in the morning. And they'd been working yeah. all through the night to get it to happen, you know? Like right. every time yeah. we go there, there's no one taking time off. They are busting their chops every single Absolutely. time I'm involved with something. Like wargaming are one hundred percent into making the game a success. So I but I mean I think dollars and cents drive, I'll never forget sitting it at a the dinner in Minsk um, and we had a dinner with uh, developers, the developers and everyone was there. It was like a company dinner that the players got to go to. I don't remember um, if you were there for that one or not, but it was downstairs in the hotel. Oh, dude, you're asking questions. (laughs) I can't answer. Well, I I think the reason I – oh, go ahead. Well, I was sitting with Skate and it might even have been – you know what? It might even have been at the headquarters where they had the cafeteria, right? I was sitting with Skate and he and I were sitting at a table and we just went to town having a bit of a whinge fest at at three guys. Now there was the head of marketing, there was, uh, or one of the guys who was high in marketing and then there was two guys who did the development side of the game. And I I, I remember saying to one of them, how did you put the Dracula in the game? And he (laughs) rolled his eyes, the development guy, and looked at the marketing dude and said, ask him. (laughs) And I was just like, you can see, you can see that there is like That's this hysterical. upward pressure. It's like, we have to turn a profit. Right. But at the same time, there is within wargaming itself, there's the, there's the zealots and the true believers who are like pure balance. And then there's the guys yep. over here who are like, well, we've got to pay for our mortgage. And it's the same as any company. For sure. But, and to be fair to the marketing guy, I mean, you- you look at the game now. I mean, the Dracula was great fun. I remember twenty. Everyone like, loved it. Pumped when I. The Dracula, I think, is one of the most played tanks in the game. I mean, if you if you were to yeah. go back and talk to to the same developer and the same marketing man, if they're there, I definitely yeah. think the marketing man won that. He won, <laughs> won that. that and he won argument. it hands down. And that's the that's the <laughs> yeah. real apocryphal tale of this is we all right. moan about it, but at the same time, sometimes we just want to have fun, and that's what these games really do represent. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Well, and not, you know, to, to, to sort of, I guess maybe sign it off on a, you know, I don't know if I've ever told you this story. I might've told it to you many years ago, but to, 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 to finish it off at least, you know, for, for sort of the, the link between competitive and, 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 you know, the, the, the game and then the, the role that you play as a YouTuber, the reason why I ever got into competitive was I watched your 2017 Minsk vlog. It was, you know, to, to, to be brutal honest, by the standard of vlogs, it was, you know, it was just a, it, it was, was just a dude with a camera. <laughs> yeah. No, there no. Was no. <laughs> you were there, but you, what well, you slimmer. captured, uh, I don't know. Well, you didn't have a beard then, so, you know. No, you, I had more hair. You, yep. Really? Onwards, I'll stop. I'll stop talking. Not a lot. Not a lot. I was, I was going to say, are we are, are we counting individual ones? No, that was that was that was that was that was out of out of out of hand. No, but um, you what you you captured on that vlog? What would we've talked about kind of throughout uh, this this chat was that you you captured that 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 team spirit that you know like the excitement of like. Yeah, it may not be the greatest, biggest esport event in the world, but you know these these were players out of a player base of hundreds of thousands of people who had made it to this event, and they were on. You know, there was remember there was that big stage with the they had the dancers, and it was oh, you know you crazy. were up on the the loft, and I just I remember watching that and being like, like it's a dream, but like I want to be there 
one day. And it, look, it sounds, you know, not to be, you know, all whatever, but, you know, I never would have thought watching that in whatever it was, December of, of, of 2017, that, you know, it was so attainable, you know, it was like within, within six months of watching that vlog, I was in, I was in Seattle, uh, for, for the Amazon mobile masters tournament. And, you know, it, it was really just, you know, I sure things fell my way and, you know, lots of people have, have, have wanted to get into comp and, you know, for, for various reasons that hasn't worked out, but you know, the, the overwhelming message that I've sort of taken away as I, you know, step back and, you know, I've, 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 what I've, I've won. I, I was, I was laughing. You remember dragon. Uh, we were having a good laugh yeah. after this tournament because him He's and I are now the dragon. only people well, him and I are both are the, the, we are the only two people to have ever won four of these big fall season tournaments on North America. We've we've each That's won bad. four. He won yeah, and, and we were we were we were having a good you know, a good little uh laugh. He won I think he won four in a row though. So he said that he's 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 got the edge <laughs> on me there. <laughs> he was never shy. Oh yeah, man. No. But it was it was all it it really did come down because I remember, you know, I was a junior in high school and watching watching that uh that vlog and saying like wow i want to uh, i want to like someday you know be be at an offline and, and play play competitive uh esports and yeah so you know if if i, I can't remember if i told you that before but you know it, awesome, i guess buddy. i guess i can i can credit i can credit the in 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 many ways yeah you were the it was the it was the spark that that lit my my sort of desire to to get into comp and it's it's definitely a bit cathartic to sit here on a on a voice call and yeah get to get to record a video like this so awesome that's awesome that is a great way to knock it off and i thank you very much for that and i like the same mate i i've met so many lovely people doing this and you know you form these relationships and it and it's why you play the game in the end of the day uh and Mm. hopefully you don't hang up the spurs hopefully you keep rolling and we'll see how you go but i reckon (laughs) same bat time same bat channel next year you watch they'll do an offline You'll be coming back, and it'll be all or nothing on the uh, on the bridge of canal again. 